Hi, me again, and I'm starting to see a lot about this subject turning up in the papers and on websites and on articles and on forums and stuff like that. And it could be the saving grace for the BBC and for the TV licence fee going forward. This could be the thing that saves them. Yeah, sad, really, isn't it? Have a look at this headline. BBC proving its worth. Broadcaster issues astonishing licence fee boast. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot more of this. And even Nadine Doris talked about it in Parliament, saying the BBC's doing a fine job over the last few years, what with the health crisis and the current thing that's going on over in the eastern parts of Europe. And could it be the saving grace for the BBC and the licence fee that their non-biased news coverage that's supposed to be the envy of the world is going to save the licence fee? It's worrying, and it could, you know, it really could. The senior BBC executive claimed that the coverage of the health crisis and the Eastern European thing was making the case for the public broadcaster. With the future of the corporation's funding model under threat, Miss Moore said she believed the broadcaster's record spoke for itself. She said the UK had never needed a public service broadcaster more in the light of events in Eastern Europe. I really think right now the BBC has proven its worth, she told the Radio Times magazine. Yeah, in the UK here, there's no shortage of news outlets to get your daily fix of news. Personally, I wouldn't pick BBC News as my first choice of catching up with the day's events. But it is a sad fact that the BBC is where a lot of people go when something happens in the world. They go straight to BBC News. They don't even consider any of the others. And it, yeah, it is. It's a sad fact, isn't it? But it is a fact nonetheless. And it's a shame. It's a shame. I don't know how they've earned that reputation but they have. I mean, I tend to head towards Sky News, personally, and I can't watch it, you know, live because I don't have a telly licence, but I'll go on the YouTube thing and, um, you know, I'll watch the clips, find out what's going on on there. But even that does my boxing sometimes, you know. I mean, the best place to get news is independent news sources now, isn't it? You know, people journalists, or what are they call? I can't remember the, the term they call them now, but something personal journalists, like the people that just go out with their own phones and film the events themselves and report on them completely unbiasedly and truthfully. You know, that's the best way to find out what's really going on in the world. And there can't be any government spin on that then. Unless, of course, you know, they're fake and set up by the government. But I'll save my tinfoil hat for later, right? The BBC has boasted a boost in viewing figures during key moments over the past two years including when Prime Minister Boris Johnson held his press conferences imposing the first national knockdown in spring of 2020 and the World News Service pushing Putin's war in the east of Europe. Earlier this month, Culture Secretary Nadine Doris praised the BBC for its role in broadcasting the truth about what was happening with that word. She was close to tears in the House of Commons as she paid tribute to the BBC and its journalists on the front line. We are on the side of free media, she told the Commons. But it's not so free that we can't watch other countries' propaganda. We have to have the BBC's propaganda, which has in its charter, it has to broadcast in times of great need, whatever the government tells it to broadcast. So we've got the BBC's propaganda. Whether you think it's independent or not, it's up to you. I personally don't. I think it's government control. But how can you hear both sides of the story unless we're allowed other news, namely RT news? You know, I'm not a fan of what's going on over there, and I'm... I don't care for any Russians, but I've got nothing against them personally, but whatever's going on is going on, it's none of my business. But how can you make, you know, your own opinion on something unless you can hear both sides of the story and then somewhere your mind meets in the middle and you make your own mind up. But she says there, we are on the side of free media. Well, no, you're not because you banned a media outlet from the UK because they weren't your specific type of propaganda. But yeah, Nadine's all over the shop, isn't she? And um, I really thought she was going to be the one to do something here. But yeah, I'm not feeling it. And she's paying tribute to the BBC and, you know, crying about how good they're doing in Parliament. So I think we've lost the fight with Nadine. I really, I really, really do. And these whole things that happened in the last few years, I reckon it could very well be the saving grace for the TV licence. I really, really do. What do you think about it? I think that's their best argument for trying to keep their TV licence or maybe even turn it into the media tax that they dream of because then it's not paid per household. It just comes out of your income tax. So it's being paid per blooming person, which means more money for the BBC. So I think they're going to be pushing this. I think this is the BBC's best weapon in the fight to save its funding model and to get more money. 
I really do. I think that's what they're going to push a lot. And um, yeah, it could well work, couldn't it? It could well work. I hope it doesn't, but it could well work. What do you think about all this? Do let me know in the comments below. And I'll see you in another video again soon. Thanks for watching.